Hello there. If you clicked on this video, perhaps you're in the market for a small, approachable, budget-conscious motorcycle. As with any segment in motorcycling, there are a lot of options. There are sport bikes, adventure bikes, cruisers, dual sports, and urban machines. And to represent those categories, we have selected five motorcycles that are all excellent options. And each of them is under 6,000 bucks. Well, except for one. And here they are. We've got Kawasaki's Ninja 400, BMW's G310GS, the Honda CRF300L, Royal Enfield Meteor 350, and the all-electric Sondor's Metacycle. If you go to the websites for these machines, you'll find some basic information. You'll see that the Ninja 400 has the largest engine. You'll see that the Meteor 350 has the lowest price. You will also find that the CRF 300 is the lightest. And the Sondor's Metacycle has the longest service intervals. However, perhaps you've heard people say that the spec sheets don't tell the whole story. And they're right. So we're going to investigate the truth behind these numbers in a test so comprehensive, so watertight, that it is going to change the course of beginner bikes forever. Or maybe just a couple weeks or something. Yeah, we'll at least give people some context. Maybe. Yeah, that was over the top. Sorry, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be that earth shattering. It's gonna be kind of fun for a little while. Just stick around. In order to tackle the most comprehensive test of small bikes ever attempted, we enlisted the help of our coworkers. Each of them lifelong motorcyclists with strong riding skills and even stronger opinions. We gathered the dream team at our testing facility and explained the rules. Welcome everyone to the first and potentially the last beginner bike shootout we ever do here on CTXP. Uh, we're gonna see how it goes. Our dear colleagues, Patrick, Jen, and Spurgeon are largely in the dark about what today's tests actually are. But Zach and I had devised a series of challenges that will shed some truth on those so-called specifications that we mentioned earlier. So that is weight, price, performance, maintenance, and overall capability. The winner of each of these tests will get five points. The loser will get one point. You want the most points at the end. So five bikes, five riders, five tests, one beginner bike to rule them all. Are there any questions? We can just pick whichever one we want. No, no, ah. no, no. You're all gonna choose your motorcycle from within this helmet and uh, ladies first. This is so exciting. This is, a, yeah, there's a lot of lot hanging on the line here. Pretty nervous. What is, what is it? What is it? Got. I have the oh. Royal Enfield Meteor oh, 350. Yeah. Yes. All right, sounds Cruiser good. Gal. Yeah. And uh, you guys want to arm wrestle for? I'll let Patrick go. Okay. Yeah. Age before <laughs> beauty. <laughs> Licking the fingers for good luck. The Ninja 400. All right. Ooh. Back to your my, drag racing roots. My roots, my Kawasaki like roots. Very no putting good. a turbo on it, Garvin. No putting a turbo on it. I think I'm gonna make sure I just have one. We're starting to get down to process of elimination here. Honda CRF oh. 300L. I feel like I just won already. That's yeah. right up your alley. You chose wisely. All right. All right. So we're down to the G310 and the Sondors. Oh boy. As soon as Zach opens that paper, I know exactly what I'm riding. It's a Sondors Metacycle for me, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm burning gasoline. <laughs> so we all have our shiny new machine to represent. I hope you gas burners can live with yourselves for the rest of eternity, ruining the planet. At any rate, I do have a bit of bad news because before you can even ride your brand new machine, before you can even strut your stuff, I'm afraid there's been a terrible accident. At one point or another, just about every rider will tip their bike over. 
So we set up a test to see how much effort it takes to lift these machines upright. A measure of how much a motorcycle weighs in a situation that's bound to happen. Okie dokie team. The first thing that you did as new riders was tip your bike over. Perhaps it was the wind, we don't know. <laughs> the way this is gonna work, everybody, is we're gonna try to figure out the practical pickup weight. So, you will stand on the scale, lift your motorcycle up, pause for a two count, at which point everyone else here will monitor the number. Lowest number wins for least effort to pick a motorcycle up. Make sense? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. And you're zeroing that out, so we're not gonna see anybody's weight. No one's gonna know how much you weigh, don't worry. Oh, yeah, it peaked right at, I think it was more like 118, I think. Yeah, yeah I like saw it. Shot up for a second. Yeah. 118 pounds of vertical weight to lift the Sondors up. The Sondors' battery is what carries most of the weight, right? And it's like, it's way down low. Way down low, which mm -hmm. we know is good for, good for lifting. So I think, all things considered, the number of 118 pounds that you guys witnessed might be a pretty tough number to beat in this group, yeah? Yeah. No. Who's confident? You got the lightest bike here, you confident? I, I've got the, I, I think that I'm gonna win this. Okay. Especially because my bike's leaking a little bit of fuel. So I'm already, <laughs> I'm losing some weight already. With the lightest bike and the largest legs, Spurgeon had no issue lifting up his dual sport. But he was reminded that weight distribution is often more important than the weight itself. Right around 150. 150. 150. 150. 150. 150. 150. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a lot heavier than I was expecting it to be. Essentially lifting half the motorcycle's curb weight in order to get it up off the ground. Yeah. And interestingly, weighs 10 or 15 pounds less than the Sondors. However, 30 more pounds of yeah. lift pressure needed. I mean, it's a longer, it's a longer suspension. The uh -huh. weight sits higher. Uh huh. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. So the Sondors is still in the lead then. Sondors still in the lead. Patrick, you're up. Sleek bodywork and clip-on handlebars can make picking up a sport bike a little tricky. Trying to do it while also balancing on a scale can be even trickier. Actually, it sucks. Sorry, Patrick. 137. 175. It's all over the place. Yeah. It's, back to, it's back to 130. Yeah. We're right. At, we're just shy of 130. Okay. Oh, 136. Yeah. So like okay. 128 to 130. So, 130. So to be clear, the data was 130 pounds which was 20 pounds less than the CRF, but 10 pounds more than the Sondors. Yeah. yeah. Now we're on to the heaviest bike and the smallest competitor, so Ooh. this should be... But it might have that low center of gravity. That's thing, true. So yeah. So. yeah, or it's at least got stuff to grab. It's got the rear handles uh -huh. and the handlebar. Cross, cross. All right, yep. here we go. Hold yep. it there, please. Yep. Hold it yep. there. It spiked to 115. It did still, spike, but it's still, back right there. still down at 85. There you have it. The heaviest motorcycle of them all was the lightest to pick up so far anyway, which is very surprising. A 420 pound bike and uh, 85, 80, 90 pounds effort, something like that. It just goes to show, you know, the spec sheet doesn't tell the whole story. It surely does not. So, Ari, do you think you're gonna be able to beat 80 pounds picking up your G310GS? Nope. <laughs> Here we go. Tell me when to hold it. Up on the tires. Up, up on the tires, up more. There, there you go. go. Hold, there. Hold, hold, there. Hold, hold there. Hold there. Hold there. Hold there. Hold there. 147, 145, 146. 146. Yeah, I think, hey. I think yeah. 140, 145, something like that. Yeah. 145 pounds. Interesting. And that's with all of the precious fluid being leaked into the atmosphere. Um, that does occasionally happen when you drop your bike. Don't be alarmed, although it is obviously <laughs> not great. There was some spilled fuel and questionable measuring science, but test one was complete. Quite the opposite of the listed curb weights, the Meteor 350 was in the lead, followed by the Metacycle in second, the Ninja in third, and the two top heavy off-road bikes in fourth and fifth. Well, that was pretty insightful. Honestly, I didn't necessarily expect some of mm -hmm. those results. Yeah. Um, but when you tip your bike over, that's some bad news, but this test continues, and unfortunately, the bad news isn't over. Sadly, a dropped bike often means a damaged bike, and the price of parts or repairs can vary hugely depending on the machine. Our producer tallied up the cost of everything that touched the ground in the tip-over in order to calculate a theoretical repair bill for each bike. Nobody, not even Ari and I, knew what the totals were. I'm gonna go first. 
the guy with the BMW is going first. That might be a high <laughs> bill, am I right? <laughs> what you got? Repair cost. I have a clutch lever. $101.21 for a clutch lever? That is <laughs> ridiculous. A shifter, 5266. Still ridiculous, but a little more reasonable. The whole handlebar, 163.39, and then a bar end at 28.44. So my total bill for simply dropping my motorcycle at a gas pump or in the driveway, $345.70. That does not include labor. That's assuming you're DIYing. <laughs> wow. Carry on. All right, clutch lever, six ninety nine. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Six dollars and ninety nine cents for that clutch lever. Oh. The left mirror is sixteen ninety nine. Okay. I'm liking this so far. Yep. Left blinker, forty nine ninety eight. Handlebar, twenty two dollars and ninety nine cents. So wait, my handlebar think, costs like seventy bucks. No. I think you need to figure out if you can put some Royal Enfield parts on your BMW. <laughs> right. you my handlebar handle was 163. Yeah, I guess I'll be putting Royal Enfield handlebars on my BMW. This, this is pretty yeah. impressive, guys. So my grand total is $96.95. 100 bucks, and you busted a blinker and a lever and a handlebar. handlebar. The blinker was half of it. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, the blinker was the most expensive one. Okay. Actually, and it was the easiest me. to pick up. So yeah, cheapest bike, up. easiest to pick up, Holy cheapest smokes. to repair. So far, so, so far, far, so far. So far. This version's riding a Honda. That's going to be pretty Honda, cheap, right? Honda CRF 300L. Okay. And they can they crash well, you know. How do you know? Uh, I I watched somebody do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the clutch lever, 51.38. A left mirror is $17.04. Left blinker 15.51. Oh, much cheaper. Yep. I have to replace the front fender, $45.47. The scuffs are badges of honor. So my total is that it's 129.40. However, if you just sacrifice the front fender, you can actually drop that below 100 bucks. 85 100 bucks. So yeah. 85 Listen bucks. Listen to that yeah. salesman. Yeah. So based on the tally that we were given, yeah. Yeah. not quite yeah. as cheap as the nope, Royal Enfield, not. and it's a dirt bike, so you could potentially leave scuff parts on it yeah. more readily, but it was slightly more expensive. Slightly more expensive. I'm right. in like second place right now. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got the sport bike body sport work, bike boy. Bro. Uh, I think this is going to be painful. <laughs> yeah, all that plastic, all that green plastic yeah. is going to cost green dollars to replace. <laughs> all right, shifter, 5223, clutch lever, 2523. I mean, it's no BMW, but it's also not a Royal Enfield. Left mirror, 9807. Do I really need to see behind me on the left-hand no, side? All those things just slow you down anyway. Exactly. Yep. Uh, the big kicker, the left bearing, $348.81. Oh. Yikes. So a grand total of five hundred and twenty-four dollars and thirty-four cents. Five twenty-four. Pretty spendy for a gas station what was drop. Your total? Yeah. I was now I'm in second place. I'm at three forty-five cents. Oh wow! So or second to last place. Second, yeah. Second to last place. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm in first place Fair and enough. not a first place you want to be in. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Well, now we've we got, got the, the Metacycle, the startup company bike, Silicon Valley Special. Got some fancy parts on that bike. <laughs> What's? <laughs> um. <laughs> we got a bunch of question marks. A bunch of question for marks for the Metacycle. I think what this means is uh, that they are not easy to get, and we don't know <laughs> when we can get them because it's a startup and it's a new bike. And uh, I think I get last place is what happens. Well, here. I was like, going to say I, I think the potential cost of owning a bike like that is that you might not be riding it for a while until parts become available. And I think that's a, that's a note for beginners: is that if you have a brand new bike or a bike where you can't get parts to replace stuff you might have it sitting in the garage for a couple weeks until you can get what you need. Okay, so Jen is on a two test win streak here Ooh. with the pickup test and the damage assessment. 10 points awarded. Uh-huh, I uh, finished last in this test, I think we can agree. I think what we need to do at this point, since we've tipped bikes over, we've had to pick them up, we've had to fix them, is find out how flipping fast they are and actually row through the gears. And you, dear audience, can probably see where this is going. Racing shouldn't be top of mind for any beginner rider, but everyone always wants to know which bike is quickest, no matter how small they are. So with an empty runway and office bragging rights on the line, we decided to answer this question with a good old fashioned drag race. I feel like this test needs the least explanation. We have a runway here, we're all lined up, one quarter of a mile away, there are traffic cones, First person with the cones wins the prize. Five whole points on the line. Are there any questions? Is this one and done or is this a series? Great question from the ninja. Thank you for bringing that up. 
No, best two out of three, just so there's no excuses about sun was in my eyes or giving me the clutch ride or whatever. <laughs> you're gonna need an excuse? <sighs> I need no excuses. 130 foot pounds of claimed torque. I'm gonna be halfway through a cheeseburger by the time you catch up to me. It's gonna be unbelievable. Claimed torque. I claim I weigh under 200 pounds. <laughs> Remember, Garvin's got the horsepower advantage and he's got the skill. He's been doing this his whole life. He's been training for this moment, a beginner bike drag race. When it comes to straight line acceleration, factors like rider skill, rider weight, and aerodynamics all make a difference. So while Patrick has actual drag racing experience and the Sondor's torque figure means it should take off like a rocket, you never know who's the fastest until you open the throttle. The future is electric, and yet these competitors will be in my past. Sport mode, engage. And we're away! Oh my goodness! I feel like I'm on a conveyor belt at the airport. Woo! I'm in second place! Gonna get four points! I can't catch Harry. He got the jump on me, but I got the other two. Look at Patrick Garvin, look at him go. Woo -hoo! Third place, I'll take it. A little ninja that could. He gets along pretty good. Parallel twin, claimed 44 horsepower, smoked us. Oh man. 130 foot pounds of torque, what happened, Zach? I don't know, I think, I think it comes on after a half mile. Yeah, yeah, okay. You gotta pay for that feature, they gotta unlock it. Sport mode is a lot less effective than I thought, you guys. Oof, boy. Well, that first run, it wasn't great. <laughs> All right, we've got two more shots at this. Let's do this thing. You know, they say that there is no replacement for displacement, and Patrick showed us that today. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good, clean fun right there. Uh, I, I didn't really know what was happening with the race because I think I was so far ahead that I couldn't, I didn't know what was going on behind me. Should we give Zach a lead? You were talking a really big game a few minutes ago. What happened to that cheeseburger? Maybe it was just my technique, you guys. I'll try something different this time. Ah! Oh, I gotta get Jen this time. Oh, it's a dead heat. Metacycle versus Royal Enfield. <laughs> Come on, Metacycle. Come on, little guy. We're gonna do it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's a photo finish. We're dead last. Drag racing a, a cruiser bike is a lot harder than I thought, guys. I can't, oh my God, we almost got beat by the Sondors. Oh, so sad. Two out of three for the Ninja. Nice job, Patrick. With the largest engine and the most experienced drag racer in the group, it was no surprise the Ninja was two for two. But the Sondors was proving that spec sheets don't tell the whole story. Despite massive torque claims, it was barely hanging on with the Royal Enfield, a bike that weighs nearly 100 pounds more and only makes 20 horsepower. If Zach wanted a shot of redemption, he would have one last chance. Not a great showing for the future of motorcycling, I suppose. Maybe in this next one I'll try to cheat. Where'd you end up, Spurgeon? Third, right behind you. Okay. Eating your dust as usual. You guys are faster off the line and I can't make it up. Yeah. And Garvin's just gone. Okie doke, well, uh, Patrick has already won the two out of three. I suppose this is just uh, this is just for fun, just to see if we learn anything in the third race, you know? We're all friends here, it's no big deal. So just uh, everybody try to win and hope for Patrick to fail in some way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going for it, I'm going for it. Come on, Metacycle! Oh, no! <laughs> He's teasing me! 
I'm gonna try and draft him. Oh, he's just dusting me. <laughs> the humiliation. Am I gonna beat Jen at least? Oh, I might beat Spurgeon. <laughs> oh, cheater! <laughs> he cheated, you saw him! There you have it. The way that you beat your friend on a CRF is you just cheat. I don't know how I didn't see that before, you know? <laughs> He plays dirty, folks. He doesn't like to lose. That's Zachary Quartz. Despite my unconventional tactics, the Kawasaki dominated the drag race and made up some ground on the Royal Enfield's early points lead. Meanwhile, the Sondors was in danger of getting left in the dust. That night we gathered at our High Desert headquarters, where it was finally time for some motorcycle maintenance. All right, friends, pretty fun day. We got to tip some bikes over. We got to fire them down the runway for that quarter mile test, but now it's time to get serious. On to our next challenge. This is the oil change race. This is an important part of bike ownership. We're gonna take care of our essential lubricants in the motor. We're doing this for time and it is worth Points. First person to finish the oil change in their motorcycle, five points. Last place, we know this already, one point. So, um, concerns, questions, comments? No, we're good. All right. Three, two, one. Change out that oil. Now, normally, I would never recommend you rush through work in the garage. But for the purpose of our comparison, I wanted to see which of these bikes was the easiest to work on during a piece of common maintenance, and which of my colleagues could possibly keep up with my fine-tuned mechanical skills. Gary, how embarrassing is this gonna be for you if you lose? Uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned about that right now. Garvin's over here throwing himself on the floor, rolling around under his ninja. <laughs> I feel like they underestimated me. I worked at Valvoline when I was in college, and all we did was change oil all day long. Car in bay one, car out bay one. We are now 60 seconds into the test. The tension is high here on the floor. I don't actually have any maintenance on uh, my bike here, the Sondors. Um, the only piece of maintenance really is refueling it, which I will do now. and we're away. Now it's just back to watching these Neanderthals with their grubby, grubby oil. More gloves. Did you forgo putting gloves on, Jen? No, I already wasted a pair. <laughs> Patrick, did you avoid taking the fairing off to drain your oil? Yeah, so oh. got kind of lucky. That's actually clearance up real nice right yeah. here. You can get to your drain plug and your oil filter. And the oil filter without taking the fairing yeah. off. Typical sport bike. Yeah. I don't think I've been so lucky, but this one is actually really functional. I've got two things to get off here. Down at the bottom, and there's a, apparently a oil strainer thing. Why aren't you using your center stand? Your motorcycle's the only one with a center stand. I can't get the center stand up. All right, you out of the way? Ready? All right. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, there you go. Okay. All right. Thank you, Spur. You're welcome. Does cleanup count as part of being done or just oil and bike? Uh, uh, yeah. No, you got to keep cleaning up. What are you doing? Keep going. <laughs> You're not done yet. <laughs> it's a dead heat between Patrick and Spurgeon. Ninja versus CRF. Dual sport versus sport bike. Which will conquer? That's torque, baby. Woo! Dunbar just needs torque. Patrick's still working on the oil fill. Okay, okay, it's getting pretty close here, everybody. Finished. <laughs> Patrick Garvin, five minutes and 10 seconds, everybody. Oh no! Oh, I lost a thingy. That's why you got gloves on, just get in there. Oh, it's definitely in there. Done. What? Third place. How does that feel, Heading? I'm 
I'm no, still, no, no, no. I'm nice and calm. I don't no, feel no. good about not winning, but like, I appreciate that I'm still zen about the maintenance aspect of this motorcycle. I'm being super zen right now. I'm relishing the experience of taking yeah. care of this motorcycle. Not one drop of oil spilled. Clean floor. I am cool as a cucumber. You gotta, you gotta maintain your calm while doing maintenance. It's very soothing, don't you think? How's it going, Jen? This is abusive to our bikes. You should never rush through this process. You're supposed to do this with tender love and care. Well, he's a meticulous mechanic. You know what, that's the difference. I mean, it is a BMW. It is a, you know, performance yeah. machine of the highest also, caliber. Also, being that he's working on a BMW, he's charging more per hour. Yeah, so he's, he's, it's much more lucrative. He's getting paid much more than all that's of us. True. That's yeah. true, that's true. Any potential G310 GS owner should consider learning how to DIY their oil because they are going to get charged a lot by a BMW dealership Good to do point. so. Probably more than uh, than a Honda or a Kawasaki. Yeah, dealer. Aerie probably saved the most money. Right, by, yeah. by doing that's this. the right way to put yeah. it. That's good, because I'm going to need to, you know, pad my bank account for brake levers and handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Can I help you? I don't know. <laughs> what happened? It looks like a murder scene over yeah. here. Watch your hat. Your hat's going to get in the oil. To be perfectly fair to Jen, the Royal Enfield, for all its Glory. Strong suits is a little bit difficult. It's got an oil cartridge on the side, so you're invariably going to spill oil onto your motor. And then she's also working to get the panel off the bottom, which is where the oil screen is. So it's more complicated, and that's because it is an old school design. I am happy to help you if you want help. I think I'm done now. Okay. <laughs> done, as, done as in you're over it. Stopping the timer. To be fair also to the Royal Enfield, it was hot out of the gate. It won the first two tests and uh, it is probably only fair that it finishes last in the oil change challenge because it has the shortest service intervals and therefore you have to do this type of thing more often. Mm. Agreed? Yeah, so even if you had done it faster, it still would have lost, Jen, because it takes, you know, <laughs> it uses the most. I didn't put oil in it, my bad. <laughs> That's kind of the most important part. <laughs> Another test in the books. With Patrick's help, the Ninja 400 had taken the lead and there was a three-way tie for third place. With one round left, it was any bike's game, and it would all come down to a rendezvous in the desert, with double points on the line. Final day and the final test has arrived. Everyone, thank you for making it this far. Our super test is a four and a half mile combined loop with five different segments to represent the five different disciplines we're working with here. So to start, we will launch from this line in a Le Mans style race start. We will rip around this racetrack to represent a twisty road. We will exit the track. We will move over to the skid pad where we have set up an obstacle course to represent urban riding. You will have to pick up a piece of mail. You will carry that mail through the desert on a trail. Then you will get on a straight section of a road. From there, you'll drop off your mail in a mailbox. You know, this is an everyday chore. We've got a long stretch of straight pavement. And finally, a wide dirt road. You will blitz back, and whoever comes across this line first is gonna snag 10 points. From that point, we'll have to do a little bit of arithmetic. But then we will know once and for all who has the ultimate the best, the absolute supreme beginner bike. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Everybody go, center your chi, get pumped up, listen to your jams, whatever you gotta do, because we're gonna line up five wide and take off very soon. Let's get up. Oh man, I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, I feel like it's a good match for the G310 GS, you know, adventure bikes are kind of just a different flavor of street bike, really, with a little more off-road capability. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good match for this motorcycle's uh, intended purpose. I think Ari has the second best bike in the mix, um, and knowing his ability and his speed and his agility, not to mention his good looks, I think he's probably the one that I'm aiming after as my most direct competition. Uh, dirt's gonna be a struggle. 
<laughs> it doesn't have the tires for it. It has forward controls that might be a little awkward through some of the bumps. Uh, and they talk about that nice big open road for us to cruise on. That is a good thing, but we can't forget that Ninja 400 is just gonna be screaming down there. So I'm just, I'm hoping for like a mid-pack kind of finish here and, and we should do pretty all right with that. A lot of pressure carrying that number one plate into this. It's a heavy job, man. The Ninja 400 is set up to do really well on a road race track. Probably my weakest point, so I'm not gonna be able to like flex the muscle of the Ninja. And then we're gonna go on to like dirt where it's just gonna be a complete fish out of water. I really feel for Zach on the Sondors. I mean, it's just not gonna be fun, unfortunately. The pressure that I'm feeling is like, this is the future, you know? Electric motorcycles are supposed to be what's next. I want the bike to do well, just to show people that it can happen. Sure enough, I have to pee. <laughs> not last, not last, not last, not last. And we're going, we're going. <laughs> Oh, the Sondors, with its easy start mechanism, is out of the gate well. Coming for you, Zach Quartz. Let's see if I can keep these foot pegs off the ground. <laughs> Everyone's tiptoeing right now. <laughs> Here's something that people might not realize is that adventure bikes and dual sports, actually pretty good sport bikes. It all depends on what tires you put on them. I was gonna try an inside pass there. Couldn't get around him. Oh no, I got an airy heading in my six. I'm coming for him. Oh, he made a wrong turn! Garvin made a wrong turn! I thought he was going to take me in the straightaway! Ah, here we go. Ah, it's Swayze! Where's he going? It's this way. Oh no! An urban mistake by the guy on the urban bike. We got the urban spot. Now, ADVs are excellent for this. We got a super wide steering sweep. You know, nice upright riding position. Very comfortable. I'm back in the game. I got Zach Quartz in front of me on the Metacycle. This is where the Sondors really shines. Relatively lightweight, good brakes, very good throttle mapping. Okay, envelope. It's a big envelope. In my pocket, and off I go. Oh, I haven't done cones since like MSF 20 years ago. Ay! Here we go, into the dirt. This is where I'm feeling good. On the ADV bike, so good I'm gonna hit a little jump. Woo! As we exited the car track and made our way into the desert, Airy had opened a commanding lead. That didn't bode well for the rest of the pack, especially those of us riding full-on street bikes. I was in second place, but the dirt-hungry duo of Spurgeon and the CRF 300 were closing the gap. This is what the CRF was born to do. Dual sporting at its finest. The bike's doing okay, if I'm honest. Wow, oh jeez, oh god, I got air. Oh. The whoop de doos are not great for the urban suspension. If I had mid controls, I could stand better. Oh, all these whoops are kind of gnarly. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's going like right through my tailbone. This is kind of gnarly. The riding position on this ninja isn't great for absorbing whoops and bumps and rocks. Oh, it's soft. 
I mean, those guys are so gone. All those dual sport machines, like, miles, miles ahead of us. Okay, final section of the dirt trail. There's a jump. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of air. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> this is not going to be good. I kind of want to do that again. All right, first section of dirt is done. Time to wind this sucker out. Jess is in the lead. This is our simulated highway section. I'm going back to sport mode. Can a Sondors outrun a CRF 300L with Spurgeon Dunbar on it? <laughs> Oh, we're back in dead last again. Come on, Meteor. Come on, baby. Oh, air, he's dusting me. Oh, he missed the turn in. He missed the turn in. shaking even though I missed the turn. Woo! Here we go, I see my colleagues. Let's go GS! I ripped my mic pack out. I'm gonna sacrifice the win and put my mic pack back in. All right, little meteor, here we go. Zipping by me! Oh no! I hit the thermal limit on the Sondors. I'm out of sport mode. Okay, transitioning back to the dirt. Maybe the versatility of the Sondors can catch up to the Ninja. With a 19 inch front wheel, long travel suspension, and good off road manners, things were looking good for me on the G310GS. Somewhere in my dust, Zach tried to catch Patrick as the ninja struggled across the dirt. Ooh, 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 ooh. Jen did her best to keep the Royal Enfield rubber side down. Well done. And Spurgeon tried desperately to make up for his wardrobe malfunction. Uh oh. That 300 is coming in looking sporty behind me. Oh god, I'm in third gear in the dirt. I hope this doesn't end in tragedy. Oh, okay, keep on going. No! There he goes. Ah. If this is what you're after, just cruise around in the desert and explore and be able to ride on any terrain, twisty road, run errands, ride in the dirt. The GS appears to be the top choice. Patrick Garvin on the Ninja 400 is in second place just ahead of me. I might just be able to catch him. Come on, baby. Come on, Ninja. Go, Sondors, go! Oh, no, he's gonna beat me! Oh, no! <laughs> Third place for the Sondors. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good job, guys. That was really fun. Nice job, team. We've always said the Big GS is one of the best do-it-all bikes out there, and it stands to reason. The three of you, Zach, Jen, and Patrick, deserve the gold stars of the day. <laughs> uh, because for anybody watching this that doesn't realize how difficult it is to do what that off-road yeah, section was. That was a huge handicap. Yeah. Well, clearly, we've all had a good time. We've all learned a lot. But now we've got to tally some points and see who the ultimate winner is. After two days, five tests, and more than a few questions about how scientific our whole comparison actually was, the Ninja 400 took the crown with 22 points. 
just barely beating out the G310GS. Rounding out the podium was the Sondor's Metacycle, and tied for fourth place, the Meter 350 and CRF 300L. Regardless of points, we learned a lot about these machines. Honda's CRF 300L finished in a tie for last place, and yet it's a bike we constantly recommend. Capable, reliable, and affordable. Likewise, the Meteor 350 from Royal Enfield. Yes, the service intervals are short, and it is dog slow, but it's hugely charming, easy to use, and would make a sweet first bike. The all-electric Sondors, meanwhile, has a horrible seat, a confusing dash, and, at least for now, is basically impossible to repair. But it's also more versatile than we expected and it turned more heads than any of the other bikes. Then there's BMW's G310 GS. It might be expensive to repair, but it has an affordable entry price for the class, and it represents just how good small ADV bikes can be. And the Ninja 400? Well, that's just one of the best motorcycles you can buy. We wouldn't recommend riding it in the dirt, but when it comes to a beginner bike, it's hard to argue against Kawasaki's do-it-all ninja. At the end of the day, motorcycles are often a decision of the heart, not a spreadsheet or a comparison test. Get the one you like. And remember, there are virtually no size or price limitations when it comes to having a good time on two wheels with your friends. Heyo, Common Thread XPers, Zach and Ari here to talk to you about the sponsor for this episode, which is actually quite simple. It's the channel that you're watching right now. Revzilla produces these videos that hopefully entertain you, inspire you to get out and ride with funding that comes when you buy stuff from Revzilla. So whether it's a helmet or a jacket or tires for your bike, some of that money goes towards making these shows. So keep that in mind next time you need something for you or your motorcycle that if you buy from Revzilla.com, you help make these videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.